Joined here by Oregon Democrat Jeff Merkley. Senator, thank you for the time. Oh, you're welcome. Great to be with you. We heard you on the floor last week. Uh, make your case against Ben Bernanke. What is it at the end of the day has convinced you Ben Bernanke does not deserve a second term? Well, because I was on the banking community, I went back and looked very carefully at his record. Eight years in which he was chair of the Council of Economic Advisors. He was on the, the Fed board, and then, of course, he was chair. During that eight years, basically made decision after decision to increase the risk in our commercial banks, in our investment banks, to uh, let a huge web of derivatives tie a, uh, our major institutions together in risk. And also, he was responsible for consumer protection. And he didn't do a thing about the uh, growing practice of paying brokers to steer people into subprime loans when they qualified for prime loans. Those same subprimes uh, became the fuel that helped uh, torch this house. So I, I feel as we are looking now toward the future, we need to have a chairman of the Fed that's willing to lean into the wind, say short-term profits are wonderful, but not at the expense of undermining the financial foundations for our families. Now there, uh, chairman Bernanke has acknowledged uh, the Fed made some mistakes, should have done more in the area of consumer protection, but he has gotten a lot of credit for dealing with the, the fire itself, the crisis itself, making some tough decisions in some tough times. Do you not give him credit for that? Has he not proven to you that he can do the job going forward? Actually, I think he's done a very good job this last year, as I put it, helping put out the fire. He's, he's, he's proved very adroit with the fire hose, but the seven years before that, he helped create the structure and helped light the fire. And so now, yes, he did open windows and help with the facilitation of credit during this last year, did a good job on that, but now we're looking and turning from the salvation of major institutions on Wall Street to an economy that works for working Americans, and that requires a different approach. Do you worry at all about the, the market reaction to a change in the guard at the Fed right now? You saw what happened on Friday. There were a lot of uh, concerns after other, some of your colleagues stepped up and said they're not going to support him. We saw a sell-off on Wall Street. A lot of people attributed that to the, to the concern about Ben Bernanke's future. Well, if we look back eight years to when Ben came in, stocks are in no better shape now than they were at that point. And that is the short-term vision that made a lot of money for Wall Street in the short term, but didn't build the economy that built our family's foundations, our family success. So the short-term reaction on Wall Street is going to be if we lose someone who's been favorable to us on every occasion, that's, that's sad. I mean, they, they, they don't want that. On the other hand, in the long Long term, we will prosper if we have an economy that creates jobs here in America, that creates living wage salaries here in America, and and that has fairness in consumer protection so the deals don't strip wealth from working Americans. All right, let me get your sense right now. The president and the White House seem pretty confident that they have the votes to get Mr. Bernanke's confirmation through by the end of this week. What's your own head count? Well, I'm not doing a head count. I'm going to leave that to the White House. I mean, my role is really that advise and consent responsibility. And I'm advising the president that as you shift to strengthen this economy for working families, you need to have an economic team that understands that mission. And that's a different mission than saving Wall Street last year. If uh, advising consent, do you have any ad advice for this president? If not Ben Bernanke, then who? Well, I believe that that's up to the president to decide. I'll, I'll leave that in his hands. All right. Let me move on if I could ask you about another big issue that you're dealing with related to this, of course. Uh, you're on the Banking Committee, Financial Regulatory Reform. The president, on top of what you all were already considering, rolling out last week the Volcker Rules, this idea of, again, separating uh, uh, pr uh, proprietary trading, also investing in hedge funds and, and, and uh, private equity firms at uh, big banks. What do you make of this proposal? Does this complicate your task in the committee? Well, and I should note that Volcker has been calling for the sort of reforms that I think are very much needed in the banking community. He was an opponent of the great moderation theory that Bernanke had of basically and uh, that um, the former chair of the Fed had, who said basically let Wall Street regulate itself and it will take a long-term view. They aren't going to take a long-term view when there's so much to be made in, in short-term profits. So it just brings me, me back to that point. But I think the president's team in looking at issues like proprietary trading, like derivatives, like leverage, is, is laying out some very important issues that we need to uh, establish clear rules of the road on. Is it your sense the banking committee, majority in the banking committee, is going to subscribe to what the president is put forward because it is arguably the most significant change, the most significant idea put forward yet. You know, we haven't had the committee hearings since the president laid out this vision, but all year long we've been having hearings learning about what happened in this last eight years. And I think what the groundwork has been laid to say 
what happened were lane markers were stripped away, traffic signals were taken down, and high-speed crashes resulted. We've got to put those traffic signals and lane markers back, and I think that that's in keeping with the president's proposal. I'm going to change gears on you one last time. One final question. Health care. we got the president's State of the Union. You saw what happened in Massachusetts. Are you of the, the notion here that Democrats should take a breather from health care, step away from it, or should double down and get this thing done? Well, I believe we need to proceed, but we really failed to define what this health care plan is in the public mind. And uh, one is simply a health care market for insurance policies that gives you more competitors, more competition, saving money, and be part of a larger pool so you get a, a better price. And the other half was a health insurance bill of rights. And that bill of rights makes sure that ordinary citizens don't have pre-existing conditions that ex preclude them from coverage, they don't get dumped off plans, that their children can stay on their plan through age 26. And both those ideas, when you pull on those, the American public wants these reforms. And so we've got to, we've got to get it done with no more single state deals, the sort of thing that really uh, has caused a lot of consternation. Senator Merkley, we appreciate the time. Thanks for joining us You're here welcome. on Bloomberg. Covered a lot of ground. Thank you.